smells like it's time for a product review. Oh, that's a surprise. The pages are perforated. It's all relative, I guess. It just depends on your techniques. And you use this for like some of the deeper. If anyone made it this far into the video, you're definitely my people. Paul Rubens reached out to me to see if I wanted to try their hot pressed watercolor sketchbook. I have seen many an artist use this cute little sketchbook and I was always very curious about it. And because apparently I am on a mission to try out every single A5 watercolor sketchbook on the market, I was like, yeah, let's give it a go. They also sent this pack of sparkly watercolor paper, which at first I was like, Ooh, that's kind of gimmicky not really interested. But then I thought, what if I was painting a coastal scene and on the water where I always try to make it look like the sun is glistening on the waves, what if I let the, the, sh the sparkly watercolor paper show through a little bit right there? Would it be a really cool painting or would it just be kind of gimmicky? Either way, I was like, all right, we'll give it a try. And so we are going to be testing these out today with the sketchbook. I'm going to be trying marker, ink, watercolor, gouache, because I use all of those things regularly. And I love having a sketchbook that allows me to do anything I want. And then we'll try a little coastal painting on the sparkly paper. Ready, set, go. Let's quickly take a look and compare this Paul Rubin sketchbook to some of the other ones that I'm quite familiar with. I just want to point out that the prices may drastically vary depending on which country you're in and the availability of the sketchbooks. So obviously you can see that the Paul Rubin's price is pretty much in the middle. The Etcher sketchbook is definitely in its own league in my opinion. The paper is absolutely amazing. I love the Etcher sketchbooks. But if you compare the Paul Rubens to the other cheaper versions of the A5 sketchbooks on the market, which are 100% cellulose paper, which means they're not made of 100% cotton, and the performance is drastically different. If you compare those, you can see the price for the Paul Rubens is actually quite reasonable. This video took a really long time and a ton of work to create, so if you have a second, please press the like button so that YouTube knows I did a pretty good job. And since I know a lot of you are impatient, let me give you a little spoiler. This sketchbook is great. The paper quality seems identical to the Etcher Hot Press sketchbook. But if you want to experience the sketchbook with me, make sure you keep watching. It's kind of cute, don't you think? <laughs> it's got this interesting texture on the cover. Oh, that's a surprise. I didn't think there would be black paper inside the cover. Are all the pages like that? Wow. The pages are perforated, so you can tear out each page. If you paint something that you really like or someone wants to buy it, it's made so that you can tear it out pretty easily, apparently. That's something I've never seen before in a sketchbook like this. All the other sketchbooks I have do this as well. The only thing I've used these pockets for is putting business cards in, which is kind of convenient. If someone sees you painting. Oh no, that's a bummer. Apparently the pressure of the closed sketchbook caused a really weird indentation on the page. So this was like pressed in between and you can literally see the outline of that on the page on both sides. <laughs> so I definitely won't be using watercolor on this spread. I'll have to use gouache. The paper itself feels really smooth, but it's not like Bristol smooth. It's got a tiny bit of tooth to it, which I like. I'm going to start with a watercolor swatch page just so I know how the watercolor performs and how it looks on this paper. If you're curious about my colors, I have a whole separate video about my watercolor palette. You can go check those out if you want. Let's quickly do a water test. Just like to see how it dries, how it flows. 
I'm not going to show you all the swatching because, well, it's just swatching. <laughs> but when I first start a sketchbook, I like to do this because it not only gives me a good reference for my colors for the rest of the sketchbook, but it also is a good way to test the paper out right away without doing anything too crazy, too detailed. So now I'm doing a test painting with gouache and a lot of you know I like to water down my gouache for the first layer or two and then I slowly build up the depth and thickness of the gouache. So at first I'm testing out how well the paper handles the gouache as it soaks in and whether or not I'm able to lift it or layer it really easily because not all paper will allow you to do those things very easily. <laughs> Sometimes it's more of a struggle. And after this quick little painting, I realized that, yeah, this paper is really nice. But when I'm testing hot pressed paper, I think the true test comes with watercolor. Because watercolor requires more dilution to achieve certain effects, the paper does play a strong role in what kind of techniques you're able to achieve. And in my experience, hot pressed paper tends to make watercolor way more frustrating. <laughs> but again, it's because I don't use it that often. Okay, so it's time for the watercolor. <laughs> I'm painting another scene from my recent trip to Sky. To test the paper, I really want to try like a bunch of different techniques. I'll do some wet into wet. We'll do some dry brush on top. So the thing that I think about when I'm like really reviewing a product, seeing if I like it, is obviously how does it change my experience? Does it make my my preferred techniques harder or does it allow me to do what I want to do? That's the most important thing. The paper shouldn't make it even harder, <laughs> you know? So when I use hot press watercolor paper, um, because I prefer cold press texture, I automatically change my technique. So when I'm using hot press, I go way more loose, way more flowy <laughs> um, and a, it's a really fun technique especially when you're doing like the ink and watercolor combination doing I'm doing some dry brush on top of the wash to see like how it layers because some paper won't let you layer your watercolor like the Moleskine sketchbooks make it really challenging to layer up your watercolor actually most cellulose sketchbooks do that it's not just the Moleskine and if you're if you're someone who likes to layer, if you like to use lots of washes and like slowly build up that depth, you will be really annoyed when you use those sketchbooks. <laughs> when I compare this experience to the Etcher watercolor paper, the hot press, I see absolutely no difference. I'm gonna of course do more tests. I'm gonna test markers. I'm gonna test all the things that I already tested in the Etcher hot pressed sketchbook and I'm going to compare the experience. But so far, like if you want to save a ton of money, just get this one. I was ready to be really harsh. <laughs> I was ready to be like, ah, oh, this doesn't compare at all because it is difficult to find a sketchbook with really nice paper. It's all relative, I guess. It's, it depends on your techniques and how you like to use it. But I kind of gave up for a while. I was like, well, I guess I'm using the the etcher forever. <laughs> so just to give you some context, this is my um, new Stillman and Burn sketchbook. It's the Delta series, which I've been using for mixed media. Um, this page is just purely watercolor. I've especially been loving it for markers. So here are some of my marker sketches. I do these at night when I'm just hanging out on the couch, but I love markers for those really chill sketch sessions when I'm away from my studio. Markers are really portable. You only need a few colors and you can create all sorts of fun scenes. A year ago, I wouldn't have considered markers to be anything that I should worry about testing in a sketchbook, but now it is actually something I love and I really want to see how all my different sketchbooks can handle it. Because as you can see, even though I love this one for marker, it does bleed through a little bit here and there um, if you go really thick. So some papers are way worse than others. This is the best one I found so far. So anyways, let's do a little marker test. First things first, I'm just gonna do a few swatches. I have quite a few grays. 
These are refillable alcohol markers. These gray markers are awesome for doing value studies. Okay, you can kind of see that it bled through a little bit in the darker ones. I love using ink underneath my markers. I'm obsessed with drawing rocks. Perfectly normal thing to be obsessed about, I think. The paper has a tiny bit of texture. So when I'm using this super, super tiny nib, it's a 0.4 and it's, um, I think it's the smallest one I own, but it makes it a little tricky to get like super solid lines. This tiny, tiny nib needs like ultra smooth paper to get a really solid line if I'm moving my pen fast, especially. So it's just something to note on paper like this, even though it's hot pressed and you think, oh, it's super smooth, like it does make a difference. <laughs> I mean, this isn't a lesson in how to draw rocks with markers, but if you're curious, I always start with my lighter shades and then I work down to my darker. I personally like the chunky look of marker rendering. So I don't care if I can get super smooth blends, like that's not my style. So take it all with a grain of salt. <laughs> I like bold marks. It's interesting. The marker is really bringing out the texture of the paper when I, when I work when I make a really fast mark, it kind of dances across the texture of the paper. I'm assuming when I flip this page over, it's going to be very, like you're really gonna see the marker. Let me know if you guys would be interested in a marker tutorial. The black, I'm just gonna use this for like some of the deeper cracks. All right, it's the moment of truth. We're about to flip the page over and see how much it bled through. I really layered it up in this area and this area. So here we go. Oh, wow. That's really surprising. I thought it would be way worse than that. Especially the spots I added the black at the end, they popped through the back, but that's really minimal. Okay, the final test is going to be a base of acrylic with gouache on top. So I'm gonna be using this new stuff I got called Sludge. Thanks to Natasha Newton, who did a little unboxing and showed this product. It's basically a, um, a thick acrylic that you can use as like a gesso or maybe an underpainting. Uh, but anyway, it's made of recycled pigment harvested from the washing process. So they repurpose product that would have otherwise gone to the landfill uh, or maybe washed on a drain or something. So I, I love that concept. Oh my goodness. That's thick. That is beautiful though. I love that color. I'm just going to do a thick layer. Hello again. <laughs> I actually let this dry overnight and it's not showing through at all on the back and the paper held up really, really well. It's completely flat still. I'm gonna use gouache on top of this, a little bit thicker, just for fun. Field scene maybe with some mountains in the background. It feels very similarly to painting with oil paint on like a hard board. The paper has been sealed with the acrylic, right? So, you know, I guess it doesn't really matter what I put on top of it. You know what, we're gonna paint anyway. Sure, you guys are cool with that, right? Um, but you should definitely expect a bunch of sketchbook sessions over the colder months. I'll be in the studio a lot more. Okay, I think I'll uh, wrap this painting up here. Okay, so based on all of my tests, you know, I've done some swatches, which are pretty basic. I did the coastal scene with some kind of diluted gouache with thick gouache on top of it. And yeah, I accidentally let the the page close when this wasn't dry yet, so I have some splotches on my painting now. And we did some watercolor, uh, very loose wash with ink. Did some ink and marker. And now we've done some acrylic with gouache on top. 
So after all of that, I can definitely say that I like the sketchbook. It feels like this paper is very similar to the Etcher Hot Press sketchbooks. Virtual Sarah here popping in real quick. I did ask Paul Rubens about their paper and they said they make it in their own factory. So there you go. It's 100% cotton. It handles the mediums really well and allows me to, you know, do the techniques I want to do. So, you know, if you're in the market for a 100% cotton sketchbook, I can definitely recommend this one. It's nice that this one is more affordable as well. So, you know, you can save some money and still get some nice paper. I'm so tempted to tear this out just because I can, <laughs> because of those perforated edges, but I won't, I won't. I'll leave it in. <laughs> As our bonus round, we're going to test out the sparkly watercolor paper. So let's take a look. So this is what it looks like without anything on it. So let's do a little coastal painting and see if my idea works out. As a direct comparison, I'm going to have my Strathmore watercolor sketchbook here uh, because I recently did this little coastal study and I remember how it felt to make this painting. And yeah, that's what is in my mind when I compare it. The paper doesn't feel super thick, so that's slightly worrisome, um, but it, and the texture feels quite smooth. It actually feels like hot press paper. I'm not sure how much texture is gonna show through. Uh, it's actually surprising how much it's allowing me to lift the watercolor. <laughs> I don't know if it's like soaking in very, very slowly, maybe. I'm still honestly not sure if I would call this hot press or cold press. It has a very unique texture, um, but ultimately that doesn't really matter to me. What matters is if I'm able to create the techniques I want to create. So um, that's what I'm thinking about. And so far I am, <laughs> which is a very good sign. But will, the, the thing I'm wondering is like how much the sparkle is going to show through. So I'm allowing a bit of the white of the paper to show through here and there. I'm actually really surprised at this paper. <laughs> I thought the sparkly finish would really interfere with the sizing of the paper or like um, the performance, but I don't even notice anything different. And having fun in your painting process is really important. Can you see how little this paper buckled? It's a little bit raised here in the center, but I used a ton of water like, I, I thought that would make it go super wobbly. I've experienced much worse wobble <laughs> in my paper, so I'm really surprised. I'll use my heat gun to dry this really quick so we can see the final result. Okay, there we go. Now let's take a closer look. Does the sparkle add to the painting or does it just distract from the painting? Does it feel gimmicky or does it seem kind of cool? I think in this case, for like a really splashy coastal scene, it actually works. When you look at it straight on, you don't even see the sparkle. The second you move a little, you see, oh, that's something. There's something going on. <laughs> uh, and it really shows through in the white of the paper, obviously. So worth it? <laughs> well, if you have the need for something like this, I can definitely recommend performance-wise. It did really well. The final look of it is kind of cool, so it's up to you. So I'll put a link for this in the description as well if you want to check it out for yourself. All right, so that is it for this product review. If you'd like to grab one of these sketchbooks, you can check out the link in the description, and I hope you guys enjoy your painting sessions. So take care, and I'll see you all again soon.